Hi guys, today is part three of a series that we've been doing on how to make your own security cameras. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to use a Raspberry Pi with a Raspberry Pi camera. Last time we looked at how to use a USB camera with a Raspberry Pi or, or Raspberry Pi alternative, we looked at the software stack for that using FFmpeg and Media MTX. Now, using a Raspberry Pi camera does not require that you use something like FFmpeg because there's no transcoding needed for this to work. All the transcoding is done on the board itself, so it gives you an H.264 stream right off the hardware, so you don't have to do any kind of software conversion between the video stream and the output, which would be an RTSP stream. Before we get too far into this with Media MTX, I'm gonna look at the ecosystem for the camera options that are available to Raspberry Pi systems. It's actually quite broad, so you can probably find a camera that will work for your use case, and there's a lot of different cameras to choose from. Now, one of my favorite vendors for this is ArduCam, and ArduCam has a lot of camera options for Raspberry Pis in particular, but they do make them for Arduinos as well. But Raspberry Pi cameras for this, they have three or rather four different lines. They have the V1, V2, and V3, and then they have this HQ series. I have a V1 and I've had this one for a while, but this one works uh, with Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s. And of course it would work with other boards if you have the right interface. The one I have is a five megapixel fixed focal length camera, which works great for security purposes. If you're monitoring like a room or something, it's got a decent quality picture. And I'll show you the image uh, in a minute from the V1. But the one that you might be more interested in is these V3 cameras, because these are their latest uh, line right here. And they have a lot of different options here. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're also higher resolution. So they give you like 4K streams or 1080p streams or whatever it might be that you're looking for. So they have the fixed focal length right here, which is I think about a 75 uh, degree uh, viewing angle. Then they have their, their wide angle, 120, and then they have 102. Um, then they have this one right here. It's 120 as well. Now this one actually will allow you to change out the lens. Uh, if you want to do a lens swap on this, you can actually get a different lens and change the, the viewing angle, but you get better zoom if you do that. So they do make a model that does have interchangeable lenses. This particular camera right here uh, is just a fixed focal length one with 102. And this is uh, of course the, the ultra wide angle at 120 degrees. So something for everybody right there. And there's a, there's a 75 fixed focal length there. Now the eight megapixel camera is gonna have a similar uh, option depending on what you're looking for. But again, you just have to pick the one that's gonna work for your particular use case. Now, the ones that have ultra high quality images, they have some 20 megapixel cameras in here as well. These are all 12s. Uh, they do have, uh, there's a motorized camera right there. They do have one that's like a 21 megapixel model right here. And it's, it's 85 bucks. Uh, and then they have other ones that are, of course, different options for a lot of different uh, use cases, depending on what you're trying to do with your camera. In all cases, though, you can find something that will work. I'm going to be using this model right here, which I've had for quite a while. And uh, it's only 10 bucks. So, so you can get this and it actually works quite well for uh, what I'm doing. So I would uh, get you get this one if you're not sure which one to get. And it's only 10 bucks and you can see how it works. And if you like this one, then you can, of course, upgrade to a better camera or wider angle camera, depending on what your use case might be. So the first thing that we'll want to do is download the binaries for Media MTX to your Raspberry Pi. So once you have your Raspberry Pi up and running, you'll want to be running Raspbian. You can use the headless version of that if you don't want to use the desktop. It's as long as it's configured and it's on a network and you have SSH enabled, everything should be good to go. So you want to grab this image right here. So I'm going to copy the link address. And then once you're SSH into your Raspberry Pi, you can use wget or curl to download this. So I'm going to use wget and download that file. And now that that's downloaded, I'm gonna use tar to extract it. So XF, uh, tar-xf, and uh, extract the, the contents of this. And then you should have a few files right here. I've downloaded it twice, so that's why you see it twice. Um, you have this media mtx.yaml, which is the config file, and this is the binary. So those are the two files that we're gonna be working with. We're gonna move the media mtx binary into a, to the user uh, slash bin folder, and then we're gonna put this into another folder so that we can use it for creating our instance of media mtx. Once everything is downloaded, we want to put that media mtx full file into the right folder. So we're just gonna run a copy command to do that. So we're gonna do cp uh, media mtx.yaml, and we're gonna put that in usr slash local slash etc media mtx.yaml. 
and run that command. I've already run it, so I'm not going to do it again. But once it's in that location, we're going to use nano to edit that file. So we can just use a nano against that file. And once you have nano up, we're going to hit control W and we're going to search for paths colon. And that's going to take us down to this uh, path definition right here. This is uh, really easy to configure. By default, this is going to say something else. You can call it this, whatever. But basically what this is going to set up is our RTSP path. So I'm going to put RPI for Raspi. You can put whatever you want. You can put Blaze Cam or um, something like that or, or Office Cam or Outside Cam, whatever you're going to call this. I'm just going to use RPI for mine. Now, if you scroll down here, you want to set the source to RPI camera, just like this is right here. And that's based on this direction right here. It's going to use the Raspberry Pi camera. So that's how you're telling NTX to use this camera. Everything else, though, you can pretty much just take the defaults with that. And uh, everything else is going to have some different uh, Raspberry Pi particular parameters down at the bottom of this that you can configure. Um, and if you want to set like the resolution to something other than the default, if you have a higher res camera, you can of course can use higher res camera features right here. So again, just figure out what's going to work for your camera and then the orientation for it. Now we put, need to put the binary file into the appropriate location. Now to do that, you can just do another CP command. You just do media MTX and then you do slash user slash local um, slash bin, or you can just do it into slash bin without local. Either one would work and then you just you copied the binary file there and then you should be able to type in media mtx and it will start media mtx using the defaults you should be able to do that without specifying the path in any case just remember where you put it now once you start it, you can hit Control c and stop it now to start this with that media mtx yaml file that we just edited we're going to run this using that file path to the config file. So I'm going to do media MTX, and then I'm going to use as a parameter the full path to media MTX.yaml. And this is going to start it on the Raspberry Pi. So this is the uh, interface that it's loading for it. So, you know, so it's loading this uh, C program under the hood, but it's running now. And so we should be able to test this using VLC. So let's go ahead and launch VLC here. And um, VLC is just a great utility for testing streams. So I'm going to open up a network stream. You can see I already have it there. Uh, notice that path uh, right there matches what I had in the paths section of my media MTX file. And if I hit play, I should get a stream from my camera, which is currently running. So there it is running right there in the background. I'm waving to it, um, looking over there. So you can see that it is working. Uh, it is a little lag behind uh, the camera and what you're seeing on the screen but in any case it does work and so this is a nicer looking stream than what you get with usb cameras in my opinion because it's a little bit more fluid and the resolution seems a little bit a, lot, a little better and it seems to be a lot of, of a sharper image too so after we have it all configured and we have our media mtx set like we want the next thing to do is start the camera at boot so that when we plug the camera in it will start to stream right when the machine boots rather than having to start it manually every time now to do that we're going to use rc local there's probably other ways to do this but rc local is a great way to do this for this particular application it's just a script that runs whenever the raspberry pi boots and it's widely supported by many other linux distros as well so to do that we're just going to do nano slash etc slash rc dot local and uh, then this is the default one that comes with raspberry pi it just echoes back the ip address but to add the command for the media MTX, we're basically just going to put in the path to the binary and the path to the YAML file, and then put and at the end and ampersand at the end. And that basically allows this to start in the background so that it won't grab the uh, foreground and it will continue to run the script even though this is started in the background. So that allows the machine to continue to boot without getting stuck on media MTX. So once you have this uh, line added, you can add that before or after the echo of the IP. Uh, you can then do Control O, save it, and then this will start next time you reboot your Raspberry Pi. So the last thing you do is, of course, just add this to your DVR. This is currently the camera that I, I've had and I've been playing with other cameras for this particular camera. So I'm going to edit this camera. You can add a new one, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to edit my device. I'm going to come in here and edit my uh, camera six right here. It's a network camera and I'm just going to paste in the, the stream for this one. And it looks like that. And it's the exact same one I was putting into VLC and click okay. And then click okay down here 
and click OK and OK one more time and then turn on the camera and the stream should pop up right there. And there I am um, streaming to my DVR now. Uh, and so this allows me to have the live view uh, on my DVR, but I can also use it for security purposes as well. But um, and all in all, it's once it's up and running on VLC, it'll work with your DVR software, regardless of which one you're using, if you're using like Blue Iris or Agent DVR or whatever. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's a really easy to do on a Raspberry Pi. There's really not a lot of stuff you have to figure out. It's just use MediaMTX. It's installed. And once you're up and running, you can add it to your DVR and everything works just fine. So we looked at how to build a security camera using USB and integrating that with the DVR. It's very easy to do with a Raspberry Pi. And honestly, I think it's a much better, better solution than what you would get with USB. The cameras are better. It's a much clearer picture. You have less wear and tear on your Raspberry Pi because you don't have to do that transcoding from FFmpeg into the RTSP stream. So you're basically using much lower thresholds on your CPU and you're not having to encode that stream because it's coming off of the camera as H.264. You're just basically wrapping it up in IP and putting it on the wire uh, with MediaMTX or the supporting libraries. So that's a great solution. And you also have a lot of variety in terms of cameras and what have you available from shops like ArduCam. In any case, where we're going to go from here is we're going to look at how you can build standalone security cameras using Raspberry Pi. So this is going to use a different software stack, so it's going to require a whole different video, but it will work for USB cameras or Raspberry Pi Pi cameras, regardless of which one you choose. So we're basically going to look at how to configure both in a single video and then how to integrate those cameras into a piece of software that will then integrate with a motion detection algorithm and then also an object detection algorithm that you can use to detect things like vehicles and people using AI. So that'll be a fun video for sure. And as always, if you have comments or questions, drop them in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe, share this with your friends and looking forward to seeing you on future videos. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at the one mule. And as always, thanks for watching.